Hi, you're with Scott. I'm Super Chuffer. It's midnight. It's always midnight. This is your right ear and your left ear. This is Mono. In this video, I'm going to describe two tragic river deaths and how the coroners came to different conclusions. These tragic cases have some similarities to the Nicola Bully case. First, Philip Richards was 35 when he jumped into the River X and died in 2015. As in the death of Nicola Bully, the coroner speculated that Philip's death, quote, could well have been some instant event, such as the shock of hitting the water. That instance took his life, end quote. Like Nicola Bully, his phone was found on the nearby riverbank along with his wallet. Like Nicola Bully, drowning was the medical cause of death. In the death of Philip Richards, coroner Lydia Brown said, his death appeared to have been instant as his lungs had not filled with water as is normal in drowning incidents. In both cases, drowning was recorded as a cause of death, but this instant death was described instead. In the case of Philip Richards, coroner Lydia Brown told the family, it seems he dived off the quay into an unknown water course. There's no sign he injured his head and there were no marks on his body. Philip had been reported missing earlier that month. It was October and no doubt the water was very cold after midnight. Philip had sent his sister a text, a tragic message, including the statement, too late, I'm going swimming. Sorry, I've made some bad choices. Time it ended. Later that night, a police helicopter reported a person jumping into the River X by the Exeter Quay. They did not resurface after entering the water and a police dive team recovered Philip's body at 6am. To most people, the circumstances would point towards suicide, but instead a narrative conclusion was given at the inquest. Why was this not recorded as suicide and why was Nicola Bully recorded as an accidental death and not narrative? We're going to take a look at the difference in these terms in just a minute. Some remarkable similarities stand out. Coroner Lydia Brown said that Philip's lungs had not filled with water as is normal in drowning incidents. She said his death appeared to have been instant. Quote, it could well have been he had some instant event such as the shock of hitting the water. That instance took his life. Drowning was the medical cause of death, but there was no sign of a struggle. He intended to go into the water, but we don't know if he was trying to get away from the police if he was making a gesture or was desperately and deeply upset. Thus, a narrative conclusion was given. Coroner can give one of 13 verdicts. Accidental death is where the cause of death was unnatural, but not unlawful. Misadventure is where someone was doing something lawful, but unintentionally kills another. Alcohol or drug related covers both death from poisoning or accidental deaths resulting from abuse of alcohol or drugs. Industrial disease is used when the coroner is satisfied the death resulted from a disease caused by work. Lawful killing is a deliberate act but justifiable like self-defense. Unlawful killing ties in with criminal proceedings and is the correct conclusion in cases of murder, manslaughter and infanticide. Natural causes reflects the normal process of disease. A road traffic collision is the result of a death that involves a vehicle. Stillbirth relates to the death of a child. Suicide is taking one's own life. Neglect is where basic medical attention has not been provided to somebody in need. Then we have narrative conclusion which is in place of the short form conclusions already listed, the coroner can give a narrative conclusion, a brief explanation of the facts explaining how the deceased came by their death. And finally, open verdict is the conclusion of last resort, given if there's insufficient evidence to record any other suggested conclusion, or where the evidence does not meet the required standard of proof. In the Nicola Bully case, was there not enough evidence to give a narrative conclusion? If not, would an open verdict have been more appropriate? 
Was accidental death the best verdict? I'll describe one further tragic death in the River X while you leave your thoughts in the comments below. 31st of May 2017 and 21 year old student Ethan Philbrick was taking a taxi to a nightclub with friends but he requested it stop early in Exeter Town Centre and he went off alone. The day leading up to his death Ethan was playing games online. In the evening he'd gone for drinks at a friend's house and then they'd gone out bowling. His friends said despite drinking vodka and wine on the way to the club, Ethan was not all over the place and still in control. After he left the group, they spoke to him on his mobile phone and were reassured that he was okay. Later he was seen by the river in some state of deliberation. A couple of witnesses described him as clearly drunk and mumbling and stumbling around. He sat beside the river dangling his feet before deliberately entering the water and pushing off to swim. When he'd gone around four meters, the witnesses recalled he seemed to panic and shouted for help. Stanley Richards, who had been watching, took action to try to save Ethan. Stanley said, It was pitch black and I couldn't see anything. My arms were like lead and I realized how cold it was. I felt like I was on autopilot playing a role and I realized that I was in danger. Unable to locate Ethan, who is now under the water, Stanley struggled to get out of the river himself, as his arms were now numb from the cold. Quote, I couldn't believe how quickly he went under. Ethan's body was found close to where he'd been seen entering the river at about 4am in the morning. Ethan had been three times the legal drink drive limit when he died, and the cause of death was confirmed as asphyxia due to drowning. Recording a verdict of accidental death, coroner John Tom Lane said it's unclear why he got out of the taxi and also unclear why he found himself down by the river. Just like Nicola Bully, the verdict was accidental death. Unlike Nicola Bully, there were witnesses. Witnesses described how Ethan entered the water, how the extreme cold may have led to his inability to swim across the river despite being able to swim out into the deeper water. It makes sense and the accidental verdict is given rather than a longer narrative verdict because we know how Ethan died but not why. No one knows what compelled Ethan to enter the water. The verdict was accidental. Much like in the case of Philip Richards, where the police helicopter saw someone enter the river, we presume it was Philip, but the coroner was not able to decide on the reason he jumped into the X. This was not accidental though so a narrative conclusion was drawn in this case. In Nicola Bully's case, there were no witnesses and a lack of evidence. They said she died within 10 seconds of hitting the water, recorded it as a drowning despite a very small volume of water being in her lungs, and overall, the verdict was accidental death, not an open verdict. Are these just minor inconsistencies, or do you feel the verdicts need to be more clearly defined? Leave me a comment and let me know. God rest the souls of the dead. Be good. And if you can't be good, you're naughty. <laughs>